Uh, a high, a battery high rate discharge load capacity test is being performed. Technician A says a good battery should have a voltage reading of higher than 9.6 under load while at the end of the 15 second test. Technician B says the battery should be discharged, loaded to two times its coal crank being out rating. Who's right about that? B. Wait a minute. Who? B. So if it's got a if you got a thousand coal cranking out battery, you're going to load it to two thousand uh, amps or what? Huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you wrote B, huh? Okay. So uh, if you if anybody put anything other than A, they need to get that one wrong. What's the right answer to that? You're supposed to load it to half the coal cranking amps, right? Half the coal cranking amps for 15 seconds, it should stay above 9.6 volts if it's a good strong battery. Obviously, you cannot test a battery that's dead like Quincy's has been every day for the last several days. You can't test a battery like that that's dead. You gotta have me check it and test one that's as charged up as it can be. Normal battery drain, parasitic drain, for a vehicle with computer and electronic circuits is what? What? 20 to 30 milliamps. That's right. When jumps, if they didn't put that mark, the answer wrong. When jump starting, what? The last connection should be made to the positive post of the dead battery. The last connection should be the engine block of the dead vehicle. The alternator must be disconnected on both vehicles, or both A and C. A. That's actually B. You're going to hook to the engine block of the dead vehicle because you're less likely to cause a, a spark that's going to blow it. Now, I'll tell you something that you'll see on batteries sometimes, and I've seen this before whenever we could pull the cop caps off of batteries and look in there. Uh, somebody would drive up, switch it off, never, never having had any problem with their charging system or their battery or anything, and they go to start it, and one cell in that battery, it won't start, and one of the cells is just boiling to beat the band because it's got an internal short. And when it's boiling, what's it producing? It's producing some pretty doggone explosive gas. And so if you hook up to a battery that's got all of this stinking, rotten, egg-smelling gas coming out of it with your jumper cables, and you ain't got no safety glasses on. Remember the explosion I talked about? It's so unpleasant. You don't want that. So basically, you hook it to the engine block, which is away from the battery. That's, what, that's the reason you're wanting to do that. Um, technician A says a discharged battery, lower than normal battery voltage, can cause solenoid clicking. We said that the other day. Uh, Quincy, have you heard of solenoid click? Yeah. When it's when you turn the key, what do you hear? How does it sound? It goes brrrr, doesn't it? Okay. You're, you're not really good at sound effects, are you? Okay. Uh, technician B says a discharged battery or dirty corroded cables can solve solenoid clicking. How many of you have ever done this? You turn on your car, you turn on your key, lights come on good and bright on the dash, you go to start it, and then they go dark. And then you let off and they're still dark or dim. What is that? Amber, I know you've seen that. Any country girl that grew up in Sampson has bound to have seen that repeatedly. I grew up in Sampson. Oh, I thought you lived in Sampson. Okay. All right. No. Okay. You don't live in Sampson? I don't live in Sampson. I live out towards Coffee Springs in the middle of nowhere. Yes, that is right. You live out there. Uh, I moved here when I was 16. Oh, well, they don't have that problem in Coffee Springs. They only have it in Sampson. So. All right. So <laughs> basically what that means is you've got dirty battery terminals, right? Nothing complicated about that. Um, okay, uh, slow cranking can be caused by all the following except, somebody tell me what the answer is. Open neutral safety switch, lower discharge battery, engine mechanical problems, dirty or corroded battery cables. Slow cranking. Remember? What can, what cannot cause that? Slow cranking. What cannot cause slow cranking? Yeah, that's gonna well, make it not. That wrong. That's gonna make it not do anything, right? What was four? Huh? What was four? Obvious. Um, that's basically you know what number four is. Number four is C. That's both of them got it right. Uh, remember this little deal I was telling you about? And there's a sheet you guys have on this. Now listen to this. There's a sheet you got. There's some of these sheets you can do real quick. Uh, Curtis did a sheet yesterday on that sable, and it took him what, 20 minutes, maybe 30. The one you don't know, sable about turning the engine, you remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah, it didn't take long. I mean, it's got a lot of words on it, but you can be through with it real, real fast. Okay, here's the deal. A uh, girl comes over here, and this is along with what we're talking about here. That she was a, one of the students, and, uh, and she actually had a little black Pontiac. And uh, she said, a car needs a starter. I told her, I said, they're going to sail again, make you remember it. 
She got a starter. Need a starter. Daddy said my car needs a starter. I said, well, bring it over here. We'll see what we can do with it. So whenever you pull, turn the key, you hear the starter go, thunk. It clicks in there, but it can't turn the engine. And, and the battery's good and strong. I mean, you can put jumper cables, whatever you want to, it's thunk like that. So I said, let's see if we can turn the engine with a breaker bar. Now, this is what that worksheet's about. So you get a breaker bar and you put it on the crankshaft bolt and you try to turn the engine to see if it'll turn, right? Okay, as you pull it on it, I was watching this guy. He had a pretty muscled up arm and he was pulling on it and I had this light I was shining out here. He was under there on a creeper because we had it, you know, jacked up a little bit. And uh, I saw the belt slipping on the AC pulley. What does that mean? What's your next... <laughs> what is your next step? What's the next thing you're going to do? You, you grab that, you put the socket on there with your breaker bar, and you pull on it, and the engine's turning, but the belt's slipping on the AC pulley. It's slipping on the AC pulley. Or, let's say the, the crank pulley was turning, but the belt was slipping on the crank pulley, which it won't usually do because it's a big you know, pulley with a lot of surface. What do you do next? Somebody think, use your pumpkin and tell me what you do next. Quincy, what do you do next? Don't wait for somebody else to answer the question. What do you do now? Huh? What do you do? Come on. I want to change the AC compressor. Well, that's not a bad answer necessarily, but the next thing you want to do is take the belt off. Remove the belt. Just take the belt off. How long does it take to do that? Get your belt tensioner tool, boing, you got it off, right? Get the belt off and see if the car will start. Boom. If the car will start, you fill up all of those pulleys, you find the one that's locked up. When you get that replaced, you fix the car. Now, I have known of people replacing engines because they thought the engine was locked up and all it was was one of those things. You fly in there without doing your, the, your homework, you can change something that doesn't need changing. But basically, I want to change, I want to surgically repair it. This is troubleshooting. Here's another thing. I have seen them, and listen to this, because this is part of what we're talking about here. I have seen them where whenever you, you go to, it would sound like the engine's locked up. Don't, don't, don't. You can't turn the engine. You, well, you pull the starter off, and the starter's fouled in there. And it's keeping you from turning the engine. You pull the starter off, now the engine will turn. You put a starter on it, and you fired it up and gone. I've seen the water pump do that. The water pump can actually get fouled up and keep the engine from turning. There's all kinds of stuff you need to be thinking really clearly before you replace the engine. Uh, there, let's let's do a you know some some testing to make sure. Um, high resistance, what? Blank. A means voltage high voltage drop. B causes higher than normal current to flow. C is normally found in good battery cables. Or D means low voltage drop. It basically means high voltage drop. If you got high resistance, you're going to be dropping a lot of volts. Just like on that little board I got over there. Uh, number seven, an acceptable charging circuit voltage on a 12 volt system is what? It's actually going to be A. It's going to be 13 and a half to 15 volts. You don't want to go to 15.6. Why do you not want to go to 15.6? Because on some vehicles, you'll blow the headlight bulbs and some other stuff if you go up about 15 volts. You know. Technician A says the voltage drop test of the charging circuit should be performed only when current is flowing through the circuit. Technician B says the leads of the voltmeter should be connected to the positive and negative terminals battery to measure the voltage drop of the charging system. Hmm. Who's right about that? Uh, well, wait a minute. You're going to cook to the positive and negative terminals of the battery to measure the voltage drop of the charging system? Now, where do you hook it up? Where do you do it? How do you do it? If you were going to demonstrate it, how would you do it? If you were going to explain it to somebody, are you waiting for somebody else to answer the question? Oh, that's what I had huh? Both. So if you're going, you're going to check a voltage drop from positive to the negative terminal on the battery. That make any different? Make any sense? You understand voltage drop? I've, we have, I've hammered voltage drop, and I almost get sick of hearing me say those two words, but. What I'm seeing in this room right now tells me that we need to do better about explaining things, and we need to hammer on it some more. Let me hammer on it. Watch. That's your alternator, right? 
That look like an alternator? Back of the alternator. It's a dodo with raisins on it. Good deal. All right, so this one here, this wire right here is a kind of a big wire, similar to the one I showed you a while ago. That big wire goes over here. Remember that? I'm going to just make an S here. It ultimately, a lot of times it'll go down to the big post on the starter, because what's on the big post on the starter is the big battery terminal. And the big battery terminal goes to the battery. But it ultimately, it may, it may take a roundabout route, but it's ultimately going to make it back to the battery terminal, the plus battery terminal. So, wherever it goes, before it makes it back there, it doesn't matter. Take your meter, hook it to here, hook it to the positive terminal on the battery. With the charging system working, you have the voltage drop reading right here. How much are you losing? Have you done that on your car? Really, I had it in my head. I just didn't say it. You had it in your head, but you didn't say it. Would that, would that help you in a job interview or what? What if you sit down in a job interview somewhere and that guy says, explain to me how you would do a voltage drop test on a charging system. Are you going to sit there, you're hoping to get this $20 an hour job, or are you going to sit there and go, I have it in my head, but I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, right. Okay. This is a voltage drop test. You're always going to go from positive to positive because you want to know what the resistance is between those two positive points. You don't go from positive to negative on the battery, do you? Did anybody get that one right? Have I drawn this on the board before? Yep. Have I drawn it before? I think I need to have a board exam and have everybody get up here and have everybody else ask them questions and see if they can answer them right. That's what I was talking to you about the other day, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you understand why now that we need to do that? You got it? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you, know, you see what? I'm, if you can explain it, you'll be, you'll know it. But what happens is if you're sitting there and your eyes are glazed over and you're thinking about Pokemon or something. <laughs> I'm not saying anybody is. All right. All right. So, <clears throat> all right, let's do this. Um, so number eight is actually going to be A only. A voltage drop of the charging circuit should only be performed when the current's flowing through the circuit. The first guy was right, okay? Testing the electrical system through the lighter plug using a digital meter can test what? You can be sitting in the car. See. Hmm. Everybody's agreeing about agreeing on that charging system voltage. You can't check charging system amperage that way because you're not in series, but you can check the voltage. If you're getting about 14 and a half, you know, volts on it right there at the, the lighter. You in all likelihood you got that because it's going to be the same throughout the system ordinarily. Uh, ordinarily, unless you got a problem, a maximum acceptable AC ripple voltage. Now that's a tough question right there. That's going to be. 400 millivolts. If you didn't put 400 millivolts, mark it wrong, but you don't have to slap yourself. Uh, if the starter turns slowly when engaged, a possible cause is a Warner defective starter. Uh, technician A says batteries can be tested with an ammeter to determine the state of charge. Technician B says the electrolyte level should be checked if possible. Who's right about that? You can't use an amp meter to check the state of charge. That's not feasible. How are you going to connect an amp meter to determine the state of charge on a battery? How is an amp meter <coughs> always supposed to be connected? How is it supposed to be connected? That was a question from a test a few days ago. What? In series. In series. Good answer, Adam. All right, so if you're connected in series, how are you going to determine state of charge like that, though? You cannot, can you? Can you? All right, then. I was looking under the hoodie trying to see your face there. All right, let me see here. Um, technician that number 12 is actually going to be B. If you didn't put B, mark it wrong. Technician A says all battery connections should be tested for corrosion. I can see how that would be true. What do you think? Technician B says battery cable should be checked for corrosion and replaced as needed. Let me ask you this. If you just look at the cable... The battery, you, you open the hood, you look at the battery cables, and they look clean. Does that mean they are? No. Not necessarily. Oh, have you seen that before? Where they look clean but weren't? Mm, no. Sometimes stuff can hide things that you can't see. I'm gonna, yeah, and I'm going to hook to the negative battery terminal. And, I, and I, you know what I used to do? And I'm not that mean anymore. I would take some tape 
clear tape and wrap it around a battery terminal. And I'd put the battery cable back on there and I would tighten it up just enough where it was good and snug. There would be absolutely nothing there. You could check the battery and it would check really good, but there'd be nothing being going into the car. And you'll see that sometimes. You'll actually see a cable that looks good, but it's dropping all the voltage. And then, my grandma. Your uncle did it to your grandma? What would a piece of tape do? Huh? What would a piece of tape do? It actually was between the post and the terminal and it oh. kept any current from flowing. It was just to see if anybody would catch it. Or I'd take a plastic washer that I made and I would put it under a ground so that there was, and it wrapped tape around the bolt so that there was absolutely no ground even though the bolt was there and the ground was hooked up. See what I mean? And I used to do that kind of stuff. But uh, it traumatized so many people it just would scar them up for life sometimes. So I just had a tendency to sort of, but you need to check that kind of stuff. It's really important. Um, so, that number 13 was going to be C. Technician A says battery load test, load test the battery to one half at CCA rating. That's what I was just saying earlier. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It is. Technician B says a good battery should be able to maintain higher than 9.6 volts for a 25 second test period. It's wrong. It's 15 seconds. That's how long the light flashes on the snap on machine out there. Uh, which of these tests measures the state of charge and capacity of a battery? See if you remember that one. A conductance test. That's what that little tester that I've got in there does. And that other expensive one too. Technician A says the voltage drop test of the charging circuit should be performed only when current is not flowing through the circuit. Technician B says the leads of a voltmeter should be connected to the positive and negative terminals of the battery to measure the voltage drop of the charging system. Uh, which technician is correct? Neither one of those guys. Okay. See how the first guy said the opposite of what the earlier guy said that was right. And they shouldn't be connected to the positive and negative terminal of the battery, which is what Brian had said earlier, that they were supposed to be connected that way. So neither one of those guys are right. Um, I could actually call technician B. Brian says that the leads of the voltmeter. See, I could do that, but I didn't. During the following, during the load testing, battery voltage should not drop below how many volts? 9.6. You guys see I'm hammering on this so you can remember it. All right. Uh, Gesundheit. Uh, what test is being performed in this illustration? What does Gesundheit mean anyway when translated from German? Anybody know? Does it not bless you or something similar? No, it means health. Uh, right. <laughs> All right, now you've learned something. Um, and at, whenever we're through, we're going to have a spelling test and everybody's going to have just one word on their spelling test. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Yes, there you go. Is that right. pie? Yeah, that's actually, a, that was on my sixth grade spelling test. Anti-disestablishmentarianism, that was one of the words we had to spell. Okay, um, uh, what test is being performed in this illustration? Quincy looked plumb confused when I said that. What is that? What test is being performed? Are we doing a starter amperage draw test? A positive side voltage drop test? A battery load test? This is like an ASE what? question. Or a ground side voltage drop test. What are we doing? Number 18. I'm going to go with A. I mean, not A, but uh, A. Is, a is right. Yeah. yeah. You said A. You were you about to change your answer and put the wrong one? Yeah. How do you know you're doing a starter amperage draw test there? How can you look at that picture and tell you're doing a starter amperage draw test? Might have something to do with the amp probe. Well, yes, it does. Uh, but are you doing a uh, battery load test with the amp probe connected there? No, you are not. Your amp probe would be connected around one of the cables leading from the tester on that. You're not doing voltage drop test, obviously. The only thing it can be is a starter amperage draw test. Uh, now, the voltage, this voltage reading was obtained while cranking the engine. Uh, the indicated reading of uh, 0 0.86 volts is, well, this is what you're doing here. 0 0.86 volts on that particular test right there. All right, is that too low, too high? An inconclusive measurement or incorrectly done? What are you doing? Voltage drop on the ground side. What is the maximum you're supposed you're allowed to have on the ground side? You remember? On the ground side, is it 400 milliamps? No, well, you're looking at uh, on the ground side. Okay. On the positive side, you're 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 able to have that much. On the ground side, you're only allowed to have that much. 
So is that 0 0.1 more or less than this? Boy, is this confusing? Hmm? It's too high. Yeah, it's too high. Now, according to this, you know, according to all of the stuff, in a, and the first place I ever heard this was at Mazda School in Jacksonville, Florida. That's the first place I heard that. So there's some fudging on that, but you can tell if you got a problem. Uh, now, here you got one more. Let's look at this question right here. What test is being done in this particular? B. Alternator output voltage drop test. Does that match up with what I was showing you on the board, William? Is everybody going to remember that? There is a, There was a sheet on that. You guys did have a sheet on it. If you hadn't done it, you need to, right? Because it doesn't take long. It's real quick, real easy. It doesn't take very long to do it, and you need to get familiar with it. A lot of places don't do that. I was actually one time when I got first time I got smacked around. I remember I had it, I checked the charging system and it was no not charging, and I didn't even go any farther. I just threw an alternator at it, and it still didn't charge. And you know what was wrong? The big at wire. At well, the big wire didn't have a uh, any power going to it because it was the uh, fusible link would burn. You know, we're going to, between there and the, uh, the starter. Well, I'm going right. to throw an alternator at something. What did it ever do to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's another one I had that I was talking about. This 88 Ranger that came in there, and he had actually put an alternator on it. And I talked about this on another session. He had an alternator he put on it that he bought from AutoZone. And a bunch of smoke came from under the dash. And so he blamed AutoZone, and he says, we're going to, your alternator burned up my wires under the dash of my truck. And they said, take it and have it checked. And if our alternator destroyed it, we will repair your truck, which was very fair of them. So he brought it down there. And, it, and uh, I said, I need the original alternator. And I need the one that you put on here from AutoZone. So he brought those to me. I put the original one on there. It was making a really a lot of noise. And it was smoking and stinking. And it was really hot. So I took it off, put the AutoZone one on there, cranked it up. Smoke came from under the dash. You know why? Because his fuel pump was pulling 40 amps. And it set fire to the relays under the hood after I fixed the wires under the dash. But anyway, it looked like it was doing on the charging system tester a perpetual load test. It was it was putting out good amps, but it only had 12 volts showing because it had a 40 amp load on it all the time, which is a lot of amps, by the way. Is anything supposed to pull 40 amps whenever your engine's running under normal circumstances? Is anything on that vehicle supposed to be pulling 40 amps? No. I don't know of anything except maybe the ABS pump. Maybe. Maybe. So, so here's a question. Um, on number 19, mm -hmm. it says this voltage reading was attained while cranking the engine. Mm -hmm. How are you getting a voltage reading with both of the probes connected to ground? That's voltage drop. You're seeing voltage is being lost between those two points. Mm -hmm. Now you remember uh, you were, were you out there? Who was out there whenever I was looking at Johnny, Johnny's at 73 Impala? Yeah, I was there. All right, I did the same thing. Think about it. I hooked to the negative terminal and I touched the ground on the engine and the light lit up. I was doing the same test, except I was doing it with a test light. And if you remember, he had no starter operation and that test light lit up like a Christmas tree, because the only path to ground that was available was through the bulb on that test light. Well, when we tightened this cable, that ground, that light went dark and the car started up. But that's what you're looking at. That's how voltage drop tests are done. You're on the same side of the circuit, current's flowing, and whatever you get there is going to give you a, uh, the uh, information you need. Everybody have fun with that?